Well, they decided they had questions. Yeah, they had questions. Uh, is THW Global good with the FTC? Is THW Global good with the FTC, uh, which is the Federal Trade Commission? Now, I don't know what you mean when you say, are they good? Nobody, no company goes to the FTC and gets approval. The FTC doesn't approve anybody. Where the FTC comes into play is when there are violations. Um, and THW Global, from my vantage point, and a little bit about my vantage point, I've been a part owner of a network marketing company, so I've been in with the attorneys and I've been in with the consultants or what have you. From my vantage point, Queen, it's probably the most um, uh, has the least regulatory risk of anything I've ever seen in network marketing, and here's why. What the FTC typically is looking at is, you know, is anybody being taken advantage of? Yeah. Is the consumer being taken advantage of? Well, how much have you paid? Nothing. Not a dime. All right. Not a now, dime. now you will have some states, for instance, in the U.S that may, um, uh, there's been this big thing with uh, Herbalife, um, and I don't know if it was the FTC or if it was the state and other states got in. I, I don't know. I don't really keep up with it. But I know there, that, that there were some things with Herbalife where they were saying, hey, Herbalife is a pyramid. Now, a pyramid has nothing to do with the, the, the geographical, geographical ge geometric structure. The, hey, you're on top of a 10-level uh, um, uh uh, ten level structure, all right? That's got nothing to do with that. What they mean by a pyramid is what 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 regulators want to see is that at least fifty one percent of a company's revenue, a network marketing company's revenue, is coming from outside sources, people that are not related to the income opportunity. So for instance, where companies get in trouble being deemed as a pyramid, it's different between a pyramid and a Ponzi scheme, those are two totally different things, where companies get in trouble being deemed as a pyramid is when most of their revenues or more than 50% of their revenues are coming from the rep base, the affiliates, the people that are signed up as an affiliate. So when sometimes you have companies now where um, a person registers as a preferred member, they're considered an affiliate, uh, they're on auto ship, and there aren't enough retail customers that have nothing to do with uh, the income opportunity, and so they get deemed as a pyramid. Well, here's the thing. Where's all of the revenue coming from? Outside sources in the terms of advertising. Now, they did mention that there's going to be an optional certification course that we'll be able to take, and that with that optional certification course, that'll open up an additional income stream uh, of coded bonuses. We'll talk more about that once we see all the details of $10 to $100 in the coded bonus system. So that means, Queen, that it's optional. It's got nothing to do with getting paid the $25 or the $5 or the $1 in the compensation system. Uh, it's got nothing to do with the, uh, um, what comes from the advertisers. That's simply people making those certification purchases because they want to get certified, and it sounds like there's going to be some compensation related to it. Right now, that's the only thing I've heard to even suggest there would be any affiliate purchase, and that would be optional. That's not mandatory for you to earn the 25, 5, and 1. So from a pure regulatory standpoint, I can't think of any network marketing model that it would be standing on sure foundation because we're not paying for anything. The certification is all optional. All of the revenue is being generated from outside sources being the, uh, uh, the advertisers. So, um, but you're never going to go to a, 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 the FTC and say, hey, I'm a new network marketing company. Would you approve me? It doesn't work that way. Next question. 